My name is Polly. I live in Gisborne, New Zealand. For 10 years, I competed in whitewater kayaking. I retired from competition four years ago. The other day, an old kayaking friend came to visit me. He said if I started training again, he thought I could make the top 10 at the next World Championships. I decided to take the challenge, and that changed everything. Platling, Germany at the moment, preparing for the 2011 World Freestyle Kayaking Championships. One of the first people I met when I arrived here was Claire O'Hara. I've been training for this event for the last, well for the last two years, but realistic for the last six years. I've been on the British team since 2006, so in theory I've been training for this event that whole time. Freestyle kayaking is a form of whitewater kayaking where paddlers perform gymnastic style tricks on big waves and in surf holes on rivers and they just go as big as they possibly can. It's just so, so much fun and the feeling that you get when you get the moves right or when you're getting close to getting the moves and you make them little breakthroughs is just incredible. I don't know, it, like there's so many times that you're out on the water doing freestyle and it's all going wrong. Like the number of times you have to get it wrong to make the slightest little jump forward and, and begin to get it right is, is just crazy. But but there's something about it that I absolutely love. So you're getting the opportunity to like test yourself and challenge yourself in some of the most incredible places on some of the most incredible waves, quite often surrounded some, with some of your best friends. And just the whole time you're just learning new things and being able to become better and better and just, and then just enjoy it. It's gymnastics on water, like how cool is that? Dems, my coach, has been working with me for the best part of two years. And we, we meet every, every other Wednesday when we're back home and he gives me really structured training and it's just made a massive difference. It's helped me like kind of, well, double or triple my scores almost. Yeah, I'm a class coach and today we're just going through the routine. Uh, we're starting to chunk the moves together, so breaking it down into threes, uh, seeing if the links are working, see if we're getting the technical scores right. Um, so yeah, we're going to start building it up from now on to a full routine. So an athlete has 45 seconds to go onto a wave and perform as many different tricks as they can. They can only perform one trick once, so once they've performed each trick, they can't repeat it, but they can perform it on their left and right side. The harder the trick, the more points it gets. The person with the most tricks wins. A spin is the most basic move. You surf the wave and spin the boat 360 degrees with the boat level. The next move is the cartwheel. And again, this is a 360 degree spin, but this time the boat is on angle, it's on its side. A split wheel is where you start cartwheeling in one direction, but halfway through you want to change direction so that you finish cartwheeling the opposite way. The Felix. This is a 360 degree spin, but half of it needs to be upside down. The loop. The loop is a front somersault in a kayak. 
A Space Godzilla is a front somersault with a twist. The McNasty, starting in a back surf, so you're starting backwards and you're going to rotate that boat around and then you're going to throw it into the front somersault. The Phonics Monkey is similar to a McNasty, apart from this time you start facing forwards and you're going to do a full spin before throwing a big loop. When you're competing, there's loads of different bonuses you can also get. For example, if you link the moves together, you get bonus points. If you get the boat to go fly into the air really huge, you get huge points or aerial points. If you do part of the move or the whole move without using your paddle, you can also get bonuses, a clean bonus for that. There are three judges. They're looking for the moves to be done perfectly. Their scores are all added together and then it's divided by three to give the final score. I love this sport because it is friendly, because it's going out there enjoying yourself and, and having a laugh and, and doing fun things on a wave, surrounded by happy, fun people. And one of the great things that I'm finding out here as a training platling, we're only t 10 days away from the competition and that's still the situation. I left the sport five years ago and I, while I was gone, the sport kept going. So I've had a lot of work to do to catch back up. And I'm, I feel like I'm not caught back up yet. What I'm going to have to do is dig deep. In the competition environment, you've got uncontrollables and controllables. So for instance, the uncontrollable with, with the weather. Yeah, to an extent, you, you can't do, you know, we can't do anything about that. Um, some things like controllables, for instance, is you know if, if you're finding it a little bit intimidating with a crowd, it's just to focus on yourself. Keep focus on what you need to do. Have a routine, uh, or like a, a very you know simple uh, ritual. So arrive, do your warm up, get on the water, warm up, and then have a think through your, what you're going to be doing on the wave. You know, and you can control the, the arousal levels and anxiety just by doing that. So there's no point worrying about any other competitor. You know, the only thing you need to focus on is about being the best you can be. So we've got, well, two days before official team training starts. So things are, everybody's arriving, so it's going to be super, super busy soon. And then the competition starts in four or five days. It's not long at all. And then it's, it's all go. When I first got here, I was pretty stressed out because I was watching the girls and what they were doing and they were way ahead of me basically doing tricks I don't know and since I've been training by myself this whole time I basically didn't really have a gauge for where I was at and where the other girls were at. In the last two or three years the girls paddling has just shot up like the moves that are being attempted has just gone absolutely crazy. We're now not just kind of stuck at the bottom end of the score sheet doing spins and cartwheels and the occasional loop. They're suddenly the base moves. If you can't do them, you're not even considered. It's just taking this huge jump forward and this huge step up. And I think part of that is that there's this realization within the, and, and determination within the group of the girls that are currently out on the water and this drive to be as good as the guys. This has come about I mean, in such a short period of time it's just kind of given this real excitement back to the sport. The likes of Emily Jackson, Tanya Foe, Ruth Gordon over the years that have really kind of just started to explore these difficult tricks and set the baseline just that bit higher. Emily Jackson and Ruth Gordon, they're at the top of the game at the moment. They're the, they're the top competitors at this event. They're the ones to be beaten. You know, Emily's won the last World Championships. Ruth has won the one before. And they've been training and competing at the highest level for, for quite a few years now. My name's Emily Jackson. I'm the current women's world freestyle kayak champion and uh, from the US of A, obviously. So uh, we're going to get ready to do some full on competition. Emily and I compete together a lot, and we both obviously have really uh, competitive personalities. It's certainly more beneficial for us and progressing females in the sport uh, to help push each other. So, preparation wise, it's just been paddling hard the whole entire, the whole entire spring and uh, just trying to keep up with the boys a little bit to, uh, to set my standards just to, uh, super high. A lot of people ask me after the World Championships how it felt to be a world champion and you know how awesome it was. And the reality for me and what I learned really quickly was that uh, life was the same afterwards. And, and so I think the biggest thing I learned from that was you know, not the feeling of being a world champion so much, but the feeling or the idea that I could set my mind to something and accomplish it. Trying to compare yourself to a dude can definitely make you push yourself a little harder. So that's kind of been my mental preparation is if they can do that in this feature, then I can too. You know, as much as you want to win, uh, 
being able to keep it in perspective and knowing that on any day it could be anybody's chance to win. I mean most of the guys now have got a good idea of what they're going to be doing at the low and high levels. Um, it's looking good today. Um, so, you know, we'll go with our routine, see how they pan out, see if there needs to be any adjustments to it. Uh, but also just get happy with the time frames, you know, so just make sure, you know, you, you, you know you've got enough time to fit everything into the 45 seconds and, you know, that'll, you know, make people a lot happier, really. Like everybody having a bibs on and it being the official team training, kind of adds a little bit of pressure, but it's more kind of excitement. It makes it all real. Suddenly, like, this is it. This is the world we've, we've split up. We're in those final little stages and, and this kind of, summarises the start of what's going to be hopefully an awesome event. Why is it no matter how much you think you have it all planned and ready, something completely unexpected like this goes wrong? <laughs> I'm getting ready for our first official, official, it's quite exciting, uh, team training session. So we've got three minutes each to do as much as we can and practice ready for the competition which starts in three days. My ultimate goal would be to win the gold medal in squirt boating and also medal in freestyle kayaking. That would be my ultimate goal. If I don't win the Worlds, like at the end of the day, we're going out there and we're competing for two 45 second runs. What if it just goes wrong? It's remembering the fact that that is just two minutes. At the end of the day, even if that doesn't go right, even if it goes disastrously wrong and I end up in last place, it's, it's remembering how much effort I've put in to get here and how much I've developed as a paddler in that time and how this is just one way of kind of showcasing. It's, a, it's, a, it's almost like giving myself a date as a target to try and get to the best that I can be. And ultimately, if I don't win, I don't win. I'll be disappointed, but at the end of the day, I'm still who I am. I'm, it's not gonna take away the fact that I can now make nasty, whereas two years ago I couldn't. It doesn't take away the fact that I've, I've now reached this level within my performance and my confidence and, and just my all-round ability. That doesn't go away. At the end of the day, if you see something, you tend to want it. If you've got the drive for it, you'll get it, you know. And I think it's an exciting time. I think it really is an exciting time. It's like a, a pinnacle moment in, the, in ladies freestyle. This world champion is going to be that pinnacle moment, I hope, you know, where all barriers are broken. Sweeping your eyes under the carpet all day long Answer with a different voice on your telephone Who's gonna save you now that you broke my trust? Your love for me is hidden under all that dust You still left me with just the shoes on my feet Today you told me Face more with your foes. Oh, so leave me a little sunshine on this rainy day. You stole my smile, yeah, you took it away Freedom like a monster, full of all of this blame Well, can you feed me something to ease the pain? And I've been scratching at the walls, just trying to find a way out But you don't care at all, you just scream and shout You got an answer set in stone before the questions read on the wall is slowly fading now but you're still a liar liar with your pants on fire track box on the sleep pinocchio one red hot wire i asked for juice but you gave me rocket fuel you 
Now she's sneaking out the back door Don't see your face more with your foes How did you feel? Super, super happy. <laughs> I was pretty relaxed actually for the whole thing. A bit too relaxed for the first 10 seconds of the first ride. <laughs> but oh man, it's just like relief, happiness. I don't know how to describe it really. I'm just really pleased that I got some good runs and even more pleased that it was enough to get me through. <laughs> Congratulations, Ruth. Thank you. How was it out there for you? It was really stressful. <laughs> That's my least favorite round. Two rides is not a whole lot. There's not a whole lot of room for error. In stressful situations, I guess I like to try and focus on the positive. Like I have all of these negative voices that are like, oh my God, when you do your McNasty, you're gonna flush. Or when you do that, you're gonna catch your edge. And so I really, really try and push those out of my mind and think about the positive. So like I was focusing on last night and actually the fact that I had a good ride. So that helps to build my confidence. I'm like, okay, I can do this. I've done it before. And especially, you know, practicing at a spot, it's like, okay, I've been here enough. I know the spot. I've got the moves. I just need to go out there and do it. So um, I'm pretty good at creating a bubble, even with all the chatter in my head. And uh, yeah, that was still really stressful. competitive I like to I like to win games obviously I don't like getting second this is a game for today this is one game at four o'clock tonight so it's if you're not having fun and it's and you're gonna let it affect the rest of the week or the rest of the day or the rest of the evening then it's not a game that you should be playing so the ladies finals is about to, to happen who do you think is gonna win it will be a hard fight for the medals definitely I think there are three girls really, really sure, like Emily Jackson, she does so solid runs. And uh, then you have Ruth Gordon, the Canadian girl. She's the same strong, almost like Emily. And uh, Nina Halasova, she re did really a lot of steps. She moved forward in her kayaking in the last months. So uh, the girls will really fight. <sighs> How are you feeling? Check this is the last and final round of the I know. World Championships. Tomorrow it's finished. Tonight we party. Right now, hopefully, I go big. <laughs>
street Barefoot, kicking to the beat Shirts inside out, I got two left feet But that don't matter, cause that's just me A smile is a curve, sets everything straight This merry-go-round of peace and good vibes Gets me going, I can't stay inside Gotta get up, cause it just feels right Gotta get up, to watch the sun rise A smile is a girl, sets everything straight I'm here in New Zealand. It's been almost two years since the World Championships. Things have changed massively since I won the Worlds. I've been boating almost full time. Last year I spent eight months travelling across Europe and America competing and training on the international circuit. Being world champion is such a huge thing and it's something that I aspire to for so long and suddenly I'm there. And at the same time, I'm still just Claire. I'm just still a kayaker. Um, I'm just still going out every event, just trying to do the best that I can in that situation on that week. The competitions are, are great targets, but they're not everything. And even with the world champion title on my shoulders, I'm just a boater I'm out there enjoying my sport, loving what I do. and and trying to kind of share that passion with other people and enjoy being out on the water. Piano, it's crazy but true. Give you my all, just drop me a clue. I'll be straight there to sing this happy tune. And we could dance like no one was watching. And we could sing like you do in the shower. 
Well, tell me not smiles like John Sun, not chance sure impossible. And we could dance like no one was watching, and we could sing like we do in the shower. Well, tell me not smiles like John Sun, not chance sure impossible. Claire, Emily, and Ruth are all still paddling hard in our training for the 2013 World Freestyle Kayak Championships. And as for me, I may have lost the competition in Germany, but I gained back my love of the river and the knowledge of what it means to truly win. Into the sun 